Okay, this video is going to be on making your own cornhole boards. You know, 4th of July is coming up and uh, the kids are going to want to have something to do. So this is a great project and they'll last a long time. Uh, here's a couple I made here. I ended up making four of them. And uh, the reason I made four was is the plywood cost was almost as expensive to buy a half sheet versus a whole sheet. So... I've actually got two of these that I gave away, and these are mine. And uh, Let's get to it, and let's show you a lumber list we've got. I won't bore you with every item here, but these prices are all from Lowe's, and this is enough to make a quantity of four cornhole boards. You know, inevitably, you're going to make a set, and somebody's going to ask you to make a set anyway, so this will work out to your advantage. Uh, the other thing I want to point out besides the list is you know you're gonna have to uh, get some painting supplies too but I didn't include paint rollers and brushes and uh, putty knives because you may have that stuff already in your arsenal so I, I didn't include that but it may be a little bit more um, the other thing I wanted to point out is your uh, two by fours are going to have to be cut in an order that will allow you not to have a lot of waste. So if you follow this pattern I've got here, this will give you an idea of what you have to get out of each two by four and not have to go out and buy a few more boards because you cut them in the wrong sequence. Uh, so that's enough about the lumber list. Let's, uh, let's go to the tools that you're going to need. And I won't go through all these either, but the biggies are uh, the impact driver that's pretty important versus just a regular screw gun so hopefully you can hook up with a relative or a friend who's got one of those and the same thing with a compound miter saw when you go to cut those leg bottoms at a, at a mitered angle it's going to be a heck of a lot easier and a lot safer to do it with a compound miter saw so uh, I just wanted to mention that and you know you've we talked about the paint supplies and you may already have a lot of that stuff in stock so um, let's uh, let's go to the uh, the layout here um, when you go to make these cornhole boards I'm going to give you a separate video on jigs that are going to make your life easier and we'll cover that in that video but uh, this is just uh, a, uh, some of the jigs that you're going to make and we'll cover that in that video and instead of just measuring every board and cutting every board they probably won't come out the same and I like to take a jig and use that as my tape measure once my jigs are all done so uh, here's the layout you know you're going to uh, you're going to take those boards that I told you to cut and you know they're pretty basic you know you got your top and your bottom and uh, these are going to be screwed into those long sideboards uh, with three inch screws and then you're going to drop your plywood on top um, and then you're going to screw it in with those inch and five eight screws and uh, before you drop it on top though you're going to apply some liquid nails you know all the way down the center and uh, and a little trick I'll tell you about uh, you know, you're, you're obviously going to pre-drill this whole piece of plywood before you go to put it on. All your plywood on all four boards are going to be pre-drilled. And before you go to put on your liquid nails, take and put a screw on the left, the right, top, and bottom. Only four screws. And screw them in maybe three-quarters way and then back them, back them out. And... What this is going to do for you is these are going to be like your alignment pins. You know, make sure that uh, you set this board aside with the four screws and make sure the screws are protruding on the bottom of the plywood by about, oh, maybe a, a quarter of an inch, no more, maybe a hair less than that. And then put your liquid nails on and then gently set your plywood back on uh, the same way you took it off and start hand turning those screws until you feel them hit those holes and, and that's going to align your plywood for you you know if you don't do it that way 
this liquid nails is going to make the whole thing so greasy and it's going to move left and right and you're going to end up with a, a piece of plywood that isn't aligned with the frame so try that on for size that trick that'll work for you and uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, talk about here too was uh, the cornhole bags you know I'm a traditionalist I want the uh, old-time cornhole bags that are filled with corn not plastic material the only downside to that is is don't let the kids leave these out in the rain because they will get wet and your your corn will turn to corn meal and you'll end up buying another set for for 25 bucks so anyways uh, that's going to do it for this portion of the video and now let's uh, continue on over to the video for the jigs. Okay, this portion of the video is about jigs. When you go to make these frames for these cornhole boards, you want them to come out exact. And if you were to measure all the boards every time and then mark them and cut them, you know, chances are they're not going to come out exact. So I like to make jigs. I'll make one board completely done and then use that as a jig and I can pretty much toss my tape measure away. So let's take the legs, for example. You know, you start out with a 12 inch 2x4 and then you're going to have to use your compass and you know set that so you end up with a a nice circle on the end and then take your your jigsaw and cut it out and once you get that done you drill your 7 16 hole for the uh for the leg now it's complete and you can use this now to make the rest of your legs keeping in mind that there's only uh three different components to this whole cornhole board. You've got legs, you've got the tops and the bottoms, those uh, boards that are 23 and 7 eighths, and then you've got the sides which are 45 and an eighth, and you're going to make eight of everything. Eight of everything is going to allow you to end up with four complete cornhole boards, and, and just an example of how the jig works is now you've got one completely made just the way you want it. Well now you can drop that on to a, a raw 12 inch board and you can trace it out and then go ahead and, and cut it. And as far as the holes go, uh, now this jig, you wanna be a little careful. You wanna get everything as straight as you can. Now, if you, if you don't have a uh, drill press and you're doing everything by hand, well, I'll show you a little trick I learned. Uh, first of all, when you go to drill that 7 16 you don't wanna start with a 7 16 bit. You know, these are your go-to bits for this project. You got the 7 16 bit and you got the 3 16 And uh, what I like to do is start with a smaller hole. Uh, and before you do that, you're going to have to get yourself a uh, some sort of a prick punch. Now, uh, you know, this is one from Harbor Freight that's spring-loaded. But you could even use a nail if you were desperate. And, you know, and just mark your board and then drill that first hole with your... 3 16 bit and after you get that then go ahead and use that 7 16 and that that 3 16 pilot hole is going to make this go in straighter so now once you've drilled your hole now you've got your, your template done but what you want to do is flip it around and mark this side up and the reason is is you know especially if you didn't do this with a drill press that hole that starts out on this side is going to be perfect, but that bit is going to wander a little bit by the time it goes through the, uh, the, uh, the board. So what you want to do is you want to flip it over once you're done drilling it and mark it up. And that way, when you go to mark the rest of your boards, you know, you're going to set it on top and you're going to just drop your, uh, your hand drill um, your electric drill through there with a 7 16 and you're just going to barely touch that board down below so you end up with a little divot like this and then you can go ahead and drill it and uh, no need to do the 3 16 first you can just go uh, the 7 16 inch bit but the reason it's going to come out better that way is is because 
By the time that drill bit goes all the way through, it's coming out the end that we started with that we marked, and, and that's going to be perfect. If we didn't flip this before we decided to use it, you know, you would end up with a little divot that instead of being right in the middle where you want it, could be the left, right, or, you know, not, not as accurate as you'd like. And, you know, you're going to do the same uh, methodology when you take your 23 and 7 8 board, you want pilot holes for those three inch screws. And there's a lot of reasons. The first reason is, is your board won't split as much. Second of all, you, uh, you, you're gonna have your boards go together a lot tighter when you get a, uh, have pilot holes. So same thing there, you know, just what I like to do is I like to, you know, put a two by four on there and draw a line and then uh, go ahead and uh, mark your holes. And in this case, I think we're about, seven eighths of an inch and sorry about that you know seven eighths and two and a half and put them in the center your best you can and then go ahead and use your your three sixteenths bit and and drill through and the same thing with the other side and now you've got your 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 jig for your 23 and seven eighths and just set that on top of those other seven boards that you cut and uh Go ahead and take your electric drill and drop it down in and make your little divot marks and pull it off and just drill the rest of the way through. And uh, there is no need for any pilot holes on that long 45 and an eighth board. So the other thing I wanted to talk about too is, uh, you know, when you go to cut this with a jigsaw, it's, it's pretty tough stuff. You're going to have to make sure that your jigsaw has a nice coarse wood blade. And even then, you're going to want to sand this to get uh, a better effect. If you don't sand it and it's real jagged, it may bind when you're trying to fold it down from underneath the cornhole board. So, you know, the uh, most people don't have stationary tools. Uh, I've got a stationary drum sander I can use. Uh, you know, and that's great if you got one. And uh, by the way, this little rubber piece here, these are really handy. You, you can use this on a stationary or a, a, um, a, a handheld belt sander, and this will make your sandpaper last 100 times longer. You just push it on there while it's running, and it'll, it'll strip it off and make it nice and clean. So if you don't have a uh, stationary, what you need to do is just, you know, use a... Uh, a hand belt sander with uh, at least you know 80 grit you don't want any finer than that and if you don't have that well you could always go buy a, a flap sander disc uh, for a edge grinder and use that and that would probably be the toughest thing to use of all but uh, anyways just do your best and and uh, they'll come out just be patient so anyways that uh, that does it for the jig portions this will make uh, creating your uh, your cornhole boards a lot easier. Same thing when you're when you're drilling your pilot holes on top of your plywood. You want to make sure you have pilot holes, uh, and you can look at the chart to see how that's laid out. Just make sure that uh, when you get all done with the pilot holes, you could actually lay that piece of plywood on top of uh, the other three pieces of plywood for the other boards and use that as a jig as well. So jigs will make your life easier and that'll do it for this portion of the video. Okay, that'll do it for the jig portion of the video. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about making your circle. Uh, just make sure you measure down nine inches from the top of your board and 11 and 15 sixteenths to, uh, to the side and that intersecting point will be where you're going to use your compass. Uh, it's not quite 12 inches because remember, we got a lot of bang out of our buck on the plywood. So we're, we're a hair short. We're not 24 inches wide. We're 23 and 7 eighths. So that's why this is going to be 11 and 15 16 from the side. And, you know, then just use your compass and uh, carefully do your 6 inch circle. When you set your compass, set it 3 inches apart and then uh, that'll create a six inch circle. And when you're done, just use your jigsaw and go super slow and turning it as you're cutting and don't go past your pencil line. Back up if you even come close and 
just keep going until you get a full circle cut out and then use some of that uh, 80 grit sandpaper or 100 grit sandpaper is even better and uh, take and uh, sand that edge so you get a nice little taper on there and uh, that'll that'll do it for the circle. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, how do you cut these legs off and uh, well, how you do that is you you got to have a, a nice flat table to set your cornhole board on, okay? And unfold your legs, and then you're going to take some objects and stick it underneath the cornhole board until um, you've got 12 inches from the top of the cornhole board to the bottom of a yardstick that you're going to set up on the table, just like so. Let me blow this up a little bit for you. So anyway, so now we, we've stacked some items. I think I used a couple of four by fours and whatever. And uh, make sure once you've got it stacked, you don't touch this table and don't move it. So uh, now you, uh, you know you've got it stacked the right height when you're exactly 12 inches from the top of the table to the bottom of this yardstick. Once you're at that, then you're going to draw your lines on your legs after you draw your lines, you're going to have to unbolt them, bring them over to the compound miter saw, you know, and make sure that you mark uh, the left and the right side so you don't mix the two up and uh, put them on the outside of the boards, the markings. So, uh, so they're going to go right back in the way they came out. And uh, now you, once you cut that line off, now your legs are going to be perfectly regulation and they are going to sit perfectly on a floor or a yard, whatever. So that's how you go about uh, cutting off your legs the proper way. You don't want to just leave them, uh, you know, square. You want them uh, professionally done at the bottom there. And the only other thing I want to talk about uh, now is, you know, you're going to have to uh, come up with a paint scheme or whatever. All I did with this design here is I, I took uh, blue tape that was approximately an inch and a half wide, and I ran it down the, uh, the white uh, board. Keep in mind, I'm using a white primer in my, my lumber list there, and I painted the whole thing white, and then after it was dried, after a day, I put my blue tape over the top of the white and uh, did another piece of tape over here. And uh, then it, after that, it's pretty simple. I just painted uh, blue in the middle, blue on the sides, and orange on the outsides here. And then once it's uh, once that's all painted and you've double-coated it, uh, you just pull your blue tape off. Now, uh, is the edge perfect? No. They say you can buy this green frog tape if you're uh, a perfectionist and then you'll probably end up with cleaner edges but keep in mind it's only a cornhole board you can also see that I did not use putty because I had so much paint in here I wasn't worried about it but if you want to use putty putty it all up before you go ahead and and, and paint it your white coat and uh, and that's it you know I I hope you have fun making the cornhole boards and I hope you have even more fun using them and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my Pompano Brownie channel. And don't forget to hit that bell so you can get a reminder of every new video we put out. And that'll do it for this video.